What's up everyone? Today we're going to try to figure out what's going on with this black pine that I have in my workshop from a client here in San Francisco. It, uh, it looks like it's got some sort of pest issue going on. What I'm looking at here is just sort of a, about a 12 inch tall Japanese black pine. It looks like it was partially decandled last summer, not an operation that I was involved in. But then if we look closely, there are white specks all over the young branches and even on the undersides of some of the older branches. And what I'm, you know, I've seen this multiple times. In fact, I've, I've had it on some of my trees and it, it tends to be relatively common, at least here in San Francisco. And so this is pine adalgid, but if you note that basically anytime you uh, try to figure out adalgid, you just end up getting, uh, getting results online that talk about, what is it? Hemlock, I think. <laughs> anyway. So the adalgid that I have on here is is obviously getting a little bit out of control and I think it's impacting the, the health of this tree. So I'm gonna see if we can take care of it. Now, adalgid is a sucking insect and even though this looks like it could be mold or like some sort of fluffy thing, uh, like a, a fungus or something like that, uh, this is actually a tiny little insect that is sucking like an aphid on the plant and it's creating a coating for itself to protect itself from the elements and, and predators and whatnot. The first thing I'm gonna try here is basically to just use a stiff jet of water to remove the majority of the white stuff that we see on the branches. And the reason for that is that if I kill the insect by using a systemic insecticide or something like that, that white stuff will sort of stick around and I won't be able to tell whether it's further proliferating. All right, I'm gonna let that dry here in the sun for a couple hours before I work on it anymore. Now that I've sprayed it off and let it dry a little bit, I'm gonna go in here and do a little bit of cleanup just in terms of thinning out regular fall maintenance so I can see a little bit more what's going on. I decided to let this uh, dry out overnight. So here we are the next day and one of the things I'm noticing after doing a little bit of cleanup here is, and it, I, actually it was completely obvious from the beginning, is that there's some discoloration, some yellowing going on in the needles here. And it's confined more to the needles that were grown last summer rather than any that were say grown last spring. And usually this type of discoloration where the base of the needle starts to turn a yellow, more of a yellowy color and the tip stays green for longer or is like the last part to start to go yellow uh, is indicative of a problem with the roots. So I would be 99% certain that this tree has root aphids on it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and repot it as well as cleaning up the adalgid. And then I'm gonna treat it as well after the repotting is completed, most likely with um, just a contact insecticide or a soap, uh, a soak in soap. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. So this is a really good uh, place to kind of stop here and look at what's going on. Um, you know, there's some, some nice fresh root growth here, which is indicative of it being early spring. That's typically what you're going to see on Japanese black pines in early spring. And then your first instinct might be that when you pull this tree out, that this is actually mycorrhiza, but 
this is definitely root aphids and I'll see if I can get a, a close-up for you guys so that you can kind of see the little critters going on. These are weed roots which I'm not too concerned about. Those will come out during the repot but there's residue from the waxy residue from the root aphids here and one of the one of the reasons why root aphids are kind of difficult to deal with is that they create this waxy substance and it's almost like they're cousins to these uh, to these guys up here but it's actually two separate insects it's not the same insect attacking different parts of plant of the plant All right, so I'm not gonna bare root the tree. It doesn't have a ton of roots in here. Uh, in other words, like the, it probably could have gone another year without repotting. And I think my client probably thought it needed to be repotted because of the yellowing. But I think the more important thing to deal with here is these uh, patches of root aphids that are in the interior of the root ball. So in order to get rid of this without mechanically removing it, I'm going to go ahead and soak it in a bucket of pyrethrin and um, then I'll probably follow up with a secondary treatment. Usually these guys, because they clone themselves during the, during the warm season, uh, it, you're not going to get all of them. There are no eggs in here, so you don't have to worry about uh, insecticides not being effective against the eggs, but there are still a lot of <laughs> weed roots in here. Um, but the the insecticide might not reach them because of the waxy coating that they have. So I find that pyrethrin, because it's oil-based, uh, is more effective and soap can be effective, but the soaking period has to be relatively long uh, in order for you to actually get all of them. And there's one of the adult buggers right there, moving around. Let's see if we can, see if we can get them on camera. All right, well, you can kind of see them crawling around there a little bit. And uh, sorry, this is sort of a janky setup in terms of creating macro video, uh, but that is the enemy in terms of Japanese black pine that I've been dealing with on a lot of trees and because they clone themselves in the summer you just need to be vigilant and if you are seeing the type of symptoms in the foliage that I indicated are are most likely root aphids then give your tree a, a couple of dunks a couple of weeks apart. All right, I've uh, got that so that the, the level of the, the soak is up over the roots and I'm gonna leave this in here for about maybe a half an hour to an hour. And it's a dilute solution of pyrethrin. Now that I've soaked this for a little while, I um, let it drip out and I'm going to be, to protect my skin from exposure to the pyrethrin, I'm going to be wearing gloves. So don't forget when you're working with chemicals, especially insecticides, that uh, you can potentially be impacted by them as well. And that means that you should take precautions.
All right, so I sprayed it down, and anytime you're working with pests, you want to reassess the situation within a couple of weeks. So basically, I got as much of the white residue off of the branches as I could, but coming back and looking at it again in a couple of weeks might be worth the time. And then uh, I sprayed it with an insecticide and allowed that insecticide to dry, so any actual insects on here should now be dead. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily prevent eggs, uh, particularly if they are overwintering underneath the waxy residue from emerging as new insects a few weeks later. So I'll tell the owner to revisit uh, the tree and follow up on the root aphid treatment as well. If you have experience with pest problems and want to share them with everyone, leave a comment below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.